Lotus is a difficult map to play on. I would like to teach you today how to play default on attack and also how to act with the destroyable doll, should you destroy them or not. Welcome to the lab. If you don't know what is defaulting, I would urge you to watch episode 14 to learn the definition and as explained in detail um, in that video. But we'll get, we're gonna just go into Lotus. I divided the map into zones. Yellow is the interest zones for the attackers. Red is the danger zone. So essentially this is the zone where the defenders also have interest for their map control. But as an attacker, you have to be ready that there can be defenders in that zone when you're going to be taking the first space, right? And remember, when you're doing the default or default round, you are not expected to do an execute. You just gather information, you get the orbs, you get a little bit of value from some um, basic utility that you have on a cooldown as well, so you can just wait in like and play in waves, essentially, right? And if you get early kills, because you're holding the angles and the defenders are just over peeking into your interest zone and you get easy kills well that means that you can gather as a team and just follow um towards the site now remember that this is a different map than any other one that we have um that we have in valorant right now because of as well as haven has three um three sites but they're different access points towards those sites because this is the first time we actually have a site that has only one entrance and that is the c site but also if you enter into b site you can easily rotate towards c by going through the connector right so this is such a difference a big difference when it comes to comparing it to the other um uh, other maps like for example in haven if you go to seaside well then you can go from long and you can also go from double dose right and then there's ct so there are like three exit and en or entrances to it right c is such a difficult site to uh to just take because you are going for a one choke point that's why it's so important on this map to gather space in the first place and also remember on this map there are three orbs one is here one is here and one is here so those three orbs they actually favor the attackers all of them of course this one is the easiest to take then b side is also pretty easy to take and then we have the a side orb which is i would say semi easy depending on how the defenders are acting because you have to cross some uh line of sights first right so let's talk a little bit about how to attack a side on default because Typically, you have an agent, right? Let's say you're playing Omen or Brimstone, uh, but let's say it's Omen. So you have the smokes on a cooldown, but I'm going to use the um, the smokes from Brimstone because they're visible better. If you're going for a site and you want to play default, it's actually very important to smoke off this passage. Think about it this way. Like if you go to Heaven A, you smoke off the lobby to make sure that the opponent's don't know if you crossed or not and this is the same purpose or like on pearl b long you also smoke or cypher cage or something like that to make sure that the opponents didn't know if you crossed or not and this is the same purpose here smoking in this point allows you to go towards the um the broken wall have a little bit more space check if the doors are destroyed or not and have the early control maybe go for the orb right so when you when you're attacking a even if you don't go A, this smoke is actually very important. So if you can spare a smoke or a piece of utility that helps you obscure the vision on that, uh, on that spot, do it. It always creates a pressure. It always creates a problem for the defenders because now they, can, they cannot know if someone is crossing. So if you're holding from stairs, well, that's about it. Well, now you have to be playing a little bit more safe because you don't know if they cross to the other side of the broken wall. Right, so that's one of the main points of how you want to attack on A side uh, into the interest zone. Then on B side, there are a few things that I would recommend when it comes to using early early smokes. And one of the, I would say, most interesting smokes is something that you probably would never never do because you think, oh, this is really bad. Smoke like this, like this is kind of interesting because it it creates a new dynamic. So what do you achieve by this? You gather early space to get the orb that is in the interest zone, right? You're not exposed to the danger zone behind the box. You can still clearly spam the box um, to check for this corner, and you can always flash out out of those smokes and you deny the vision 
for the opponents uh, that are standing on site. So this is like a very good smoke just to get the early uh, early uh, early map control on this uh, on this space. But when you then want to go further, well, one of the best smokes is just this to just smoke out the exit because this is again a choke point, very similar to the seaside, right? So uh, this is something that not many people would just do with this smoke because it will feel unnatural because this is not clearly favorable for the attackers. But it gives you a few points of advantage when it comes to taking the yellow interest zone. Now, on Seaside, this is a very interesting uh, position as well. Because you're going to be expected to fight with this player here. Like, this is the barrier, essentially, for the defenders. So there's almost always, unless the player on C is a sentinel, someone will be taking the early interest zone from the defenders here. Right? So you're expected to have a first tempo peak to this player. And that means that you can consider smoking his position off as well. But this is, again, a smoke that gives you just the early advantage to get the yellow interest zone and will not be used for the actual execute. Because if you want to do an actual execute, you should probably do it a little bit deeper to smoke the passage, deny the vision, and then sneak on the on the site as well. By sneak, I also mean like fully running. Like you just, you just want to deny the vision, essentially, right? Um... So there's a lot of a lot of good smokes that allow you to take space just because you do them a little bit in a more unnatural way. Um, but again, those require a little bit of imagination. Most teammates will probably say, oh my god, Brimson, what is this shit smoke? Or something like that. But <sighs> this will take some time. But the more people use good smokes and creative smokes, the more people will actually, uh, you know, learn something about this game uh, but the, the the early smokes are so important on this map this is why also harbor is actually pretty useful on attack but dreadful on defense as always because you're able to use your use your wall to early block vision of any of the yellow interest zones right but you're also able to use cascade to block like like create space it's actually cascade um it's a it's a perfect example uh, it's a perfect example of a piece of utility that is made for taking space. Like, this is a, actually a great tool to imagine how are you taking space in the interest zones. Because let's say you're playing harbor in this space, and you're using the cascade from the beginning of the round, then it just kind of goes with you, and you slowly take that space as the cascade is blocking the vision of those players, and then finishing the move, right? Look, this is actually a pretty good example. If you do cascade like this, right, and then it finishes up here, then you're able to take the entire space in the yellow interest zone and then also leave the wall in that spot where it's perfect to actually go onto site. Right? And it, it, it visualizes how you should be taking the space in the first place. Right? It, it's similar here as well. When you use the cascade like this, it's going to end up here... Uh, like we can, for example, use use it like this, right? So you're able to isolate, or probably maybe even like that a little bit. I'm not sure if this is actually a good representation of the actual graphic, but I would probably do something like this to block the vision from um, from the B link, from the upper, and then you can isolate the angle towards the destroyable door and get like a good idea as well. But for that, that's for the actual execute. But still, you're able to use this to just gather the early space into the yellow interest zone, right? And on the A side, you can do the same here by just doing a cascade that goes like this, right? So think about gathering space on this map as an imperative macro objective because the map relies on rotation of the, uh, rotations of the defenders. In many cases, they're going to be like over-rotating, specifically when the... Um, when they will have a sage um, active wall somewhere on this on, on on the map, but it's important to fight for those yellow zones, right? And now another big thing when it comes to um, playing default on this map is the biggest question of all: should you destroy the doors or should you not? And this is a yes and no question for both defenders and attackers because it depends on the context. Let's say I'm playing default on... Uh, let's, let's say this is my default. Oops. Let's say this is my default right now. 
race is holding B, it doesn't matter if it's a race duel or whatever, right? We're just holding like two players holding C, one player holding B, two players going A. So those those two pairs are working to get a hold of the yellow interest zones, right? The race just holds in case someone pushes out because she's alone. Now, the thing is, the job of those players here is to gather information on who's playing and then make sure to under, make sure to not die. And if they get an advantage, go back and group up, right? If we're pushing into A side like this, if you're going to destroy the door as an attacker, that essentially creates another pressure point towards B side, right? So as a defender, when your opponents are playing slow and steady, you never want to destroy those doors because you never want to open another passage towards your side if you're holding B, right? It's kind of similar to Ascend Window in that case because as a defender, there's literally no point in destroying it because it alerts you in case someone goes garden and wants to go haven it's a very important sound cue and the same goes for this wall for this um, breakable door here on the b side right but if the attackers for example do a full execute on a and then we have a lurker uh, just one mid right like this then it's actually important for the defenders to destroy the doors because that creates pressure for the players that are executing site because they can get flanked fast by the defender of B on, on B. So you need to understand the context because just by default, destroying the, the doors is never good because your opponents will just clearly use the fact against you. I see many defenders just mindlessly destroy the doors first thing and then they are surprised that the attackers are just gonna push into b at b at some point after faking a like it's it's really obvious that it it's not an advantage towards the defenders to destroy those doors um if you're just holding sites right but as an attacker in most cases you want to destroy those doors so if you're playing Defaulty, you want to destroy those doors because they create another passage that the defenders have to take care of. If you're playing execute on A, you typically don't want to destroy the doors unless you want to rotate to B. But if you just keep it intact, then that means that the defenders cannot fast rotate towards A side and get a get like a pincer movement on you unless they alert you that they destroyed the doors. And remember, that it also takes I think 15 bullets. Uh, or 16 bullets to destroy those doors. So someone who spams that door needs to reload. So that gives you a lot of time to react because you hear that someone spams the doors, then it has to reload. And that means you can reposition and be ready for that person, right? So it's super important. Um, and um, yeah, I guess, I guess that's about it. I don't want to go more in depth. This is just like a quick introduction of, of the zones for this map. Remember that there are a few macro objectives, so let's sum it up. One, you want to play um, for the early yellow zones as an attacker. Taking the orbs is really important on this map because it's tough to enter sites on this map without using ultimates because it requires always good flashes, good position on the smokes. But if you have huge area of effects ultimates like Fade, Breach, um, Harbor, or initiation ultimates like Yoru, Ray's, um, you know, all, all of those scary ultimates that will just make sure that you get her space or the info, they are the key to victory on this map. And three orbs on, on one map allow you to snowball your ult economy way faster, right? And as an objective uh, for the attackers, typically you also want to destroy the doors. As a defender, typically you don't want to unless your opponents are doing a full execute towards a site now also remember that there's one one actually one area that i didn't speak about yet and that's the rotational door it's very important as well that it has kind of similar um aspect to it like the breakable door you can actually do a full execute towards a site and never go through the through through the tree that just requires you to be a little bit more aware 
going on a side and probably smoking off this position right here to make sure that you're not going to get pincet when there's a defender from a and then they, they will never have crossfire uh but in general you can think about it this way uh if you want a comparison i would say that the best comparison to this area here is playing haven on um haven a side when you push through long as an attacker and you never go short you're just aware that there can someone be short, specifically against Ecos. You want to avoid that area because of shotguns. So then you just, then after planting, you're just a little bit more uh, cautious about it, right? Or someone is holding you when you're planting. Maybe they will peek through the smoke and so on. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys learned something uh, and see you around in the next episode.